Hello and welcome to the OM Genomics Show. I am your host, Maria Nadesat, and today I'm going to answer a question that I got over an email that I thought the rest of you might like to hear the answer to as well. So here it goes. Uh, I'm a first year PhD student in a wet lab where I'm the only one doing bioinformatics. I started learning R after your first video on programming languages, but I feel that I need more guidance on how to get started with bioinformatics. So here's the path that I would recommend for getting to that useful point where you can do data analysis and do bioinformatics. So the first thing you need to do if you're just starting out, and let's say you know biology, but maybe you haven't done programming or a whole lot of math analysis before. So what you should do is number one, start with a foundation in either Python or R, maybe both if you feel like it, and doing something in Bash. And Defining what a foundation is here is really important because you could go off and get an entire computer science degree. And I don't want you to do that just to do bioinformatics because it's going to delay the progress of science. I want you to get started right now and just, you know, get right to it. So the foundation that you do need in order to get started and be able to do some basic data analysis is in Python. I want you to get to the point where you can read in some data, parse it into a nice array or in Python is called a list or use NumPy, whatever you want, just read in the data, be able to run some kind of statistical test on it, like a t-test um, to compare different columns to something else, and then you're good. That's all you need to do in Python or R. For Bash, I want you to be able to navigate around directories to be able to open files and look at what's inside of them. And number three, to be able to run a program and output the results of that program to a file. And here a program can just be sort and unique or WC or one of these things that's built into the command line. So you can check out my bash video on how to get started with that. Just the first time you're opening up the command line, being able to read files and so on. And the rest you can just Google for and find a few tutorials online and you'll be good to go. So that's all you need for a foundation, just being able to basically read data. That's good. And then the second thing I want you to do on the path to bioinformatics mastery is to do a small project where you take some data, you do some analysis of it, and you present the results um, with some plots in like a PowerPoint presentation or an equivalent to PowerPoint. So here for this project, I recommend that you keep it small for now. And you can use publicly available data. A good source of data is the UCSC genome browser, where you can use the table browser to download some CSV files of the different tracks and just, you know, look at that data, use that for reading into Python or something, be able to compare the data to different things. And it's even better if instead of using publicly available data, if you can also have some data from your very own project or from your own lab that you can play with. And this is going to make the results more interesting to everyone around you, especially if you have a PhD advisor and they would prefer that maybe you actually work with data that's relevant to their research and to your thesis research. So that would be good. And then it is also the project ends up being more publishable because you're not just redoing things that other people may have already done, you'll actually be doing something completely novel just because the data is new. Um, and this also makes it good for you because you're working with data that's relevant to your field that you might end up continuing to work in. So you should always try to be as specific as possible because that's what science is. You dig really deep into one specific area so the number one thing I would say is don't try to do everything at once. This is a really big overwhelm for people as they're starting out in bioinformatics. And I remember thinking that I needed to know all of these different things because there are experts online that talk about them. And I should totally be able to do protein folding and also be able to do next generation sequencing analysis. But hardly anyone does all of these different things. So you should focus on the area that you're actually going to be working in and not be too discouraged that there is so much to do with bioinformatics out there. OK, so uh, moving on, when you're looking at data, whether it's from your own lab or from publicly available data sources, start by actually understanding where the data comes from, why it was generated and what kinds of biological questions you may be able to address or answer with that data. And this is really important because you could be looking at data and just trying to 
you know, plot random variables and you will learn absolutely nothing about biology from that. And you won't necessarily learn how to do proper data analysis because you need to understand what the data is you're looking at in order to analyze it in a meaningful way. So be careful with that. Don't just plot random things. That's fun, but to do actual data analysis, bioinformatics has biology in it and you should understand where your data comes from. And here's a few ideas for what you can do with data. You can look into some statistical tests to run on it. Make sure you understand whether the statistical tests actually match the data you're looking at. Uh, you can't run a pair t-test if the data is not paired, so careful. And check out some machine learning techniques like PCA or look for correlations or just start plotting the data to see if there's any interesting patterns you want to investigate further. And of course, go back to what your data is. See if there are any questions you can ask here that you can answer with some statistical tests or see whether it's possible for you to predict something based on other variables in the data using machine learning. So those would be really cool projects. And you're going to end up, and you should, Google as you go. Google is your friend. Stack Overflow is your friend. You will definitely need to Google some things as you go. But now that you have that foundation with programming that we talked about in step one, you will be able to search for the rest of it. You'll be able to Google to get the rest of the project done because you'll be able to understand what Stack Overflow tells you when it comes up with a solution to your problem. If you can't read that code, you won't be able to get anywhere. And that's why we learn programming first in step one. So just get that foundation out of the way. Now, if you Google something, you get completely stuck and Google doesn't answer any of your questions after several tries, then you can start asking those coding questions on Stack Overflow, or if you have problems with bioinformatics specific things, then you can ask the questions on Biostars. That's a really good resource as well. Now, as you're doing a small project, or as you're doing multiple projects, I would recommend you should always jump right in, you know, start analyzing that data, do something productive, it's awesome. But you should also occasionally do something I like to call a tool safari. And this is where you go online and you search, what are good bioinformatics tools? So here's one thing. So make sure that you're aware of the commonly used tools in your field which means that you know their names and you know their main purposes. Like you know if you're doing next generation sequencing analysis, you have to know what the difference is between an aligner and a variant caller. And you have to know that for variant calling, there are structural variants and these are called very different from SNPs. So that's an example. You have to know those broad things so that when you're looking for something like, oh, I need a variant caller, then you should know that you need to look for something different if you're looking for big structural variants versus SNPs. So you have to know the difference. And so here's an example. Uh, you can always learn more for these tools when you need them. And here's an example of that. There is a tool called BetTools, which is super useful for comparing sets of genomic intervals called bet files. And if you're asking a question like how many of these variants that we found overlap with link RNAs, then BetTools will give you an answer to that question. And before I knew that bed tools existed, there were a few times that I had questions like that. And I wrote some Python scripts and basically reinvented the wheel doing things that bed tools could have done for me. And it takes time. It maybe took me a couple of days total of this kind of analysis where I was just redoing things that I had no idea there was a tool out there to do. So if I had known that bed tools existed, even if I had no idea how to use it, like I wouldn't have necessarily used it before. But if I just knew it had been there, then when I ran into a problem, then I would be like, oh, right, I know bed tools exist. That's for comparing genomic intervals, right? They'll tell me whether things are overlapping each other. I should go check that out. And then I would have Googled for bed tools. I would have found it. I would have learned how to use it. And I would have solved my problem in half an hour instead of two days. And that's also going to save you a lot of time in the future as you come up with those issues again. And now you just know how to use bed tools already because it can do so many different things. It's super useful. I didn't need to spend weeks learning how to use bed tools and every other tool in the NGS field. If I had done a couple of searches on Google for useful bioinformatics tools, I would have been aware enough to go back and find the specific tool I needed later. So I would have been aware of bed tools. So that's what you should do for a tool safari. You go and you search most commonly used NGS tools, 
great NGS tools, best NGS tools. Just search for what's useful out there. Search for Python packages for machine learning. And then you'll know that things exist. And then when you come across a problem that may be the first thing, the first package that you're using doesn't let you do a certain kind of machine learning, then maybe you will know that at least that thing exists and you'll be able to go and look for it when you need it. So just be aware of what's out there. So the fourth thing after the tool safari is if you want to do a bioinformatics career, I would recommend that you start thinking about places in the analysis you're doing where there are gaps. Finding those gaps and filling them by creating your own tools is going to make you more um, impactful in the field if you can make tools other people can also use. You can publish those tools on their own if they're useful to enough other people. And it's just a really incredible way to contribute to the scientific community and for you to promote yourself and your work. And it's also gonna be really fun, actually. I really enjoy making tools more than I enjoy just doing data analysis for, um, for a specific purpose. I like building tools that can be used for many different things. And thinking about the possibilities of what your tools can be used for outside of your very specific subfield can be very interesting. And it can also make it easier for you to find a job, especially in industry, or if you're in bioinformatics as a whole, even in academia, it can be really impactful for you to have tools to show off. If you're looking for faculty positions, you want to get a job as a professor. If you want to go into industry, people might know about you because of your tools, and that's going to give you a huge head start when it comes to your career. So I would always recommend looking at places where there are those gaps that you can fill by making your own tools. Now, making a tool can be as easy as building an R package or turning a Python script into a command line program using just a package like argparse that lets you parse arguments on the command line and then you're good. But you can also build web applications which are going to make your research accessible to more researchers, especially if it's something that regular biologists who are not actively coding in bioinformatics like we're all now doing. If if you want them to use it, then it's really good to have it in some kind of a web application so it can be more useful for them. And that's more difficult to do. I wouldn't recommend that you do that at first. Start with some R packages and Python scripts that are command line programs. And you will naturally find gaps as you're doing these kinds of analyses. So just focus on solving the problems as they come up in the projects you're doing and start to think if there are any of those gaps that you want to fill with specific software. You'll probably end up building scripts for them yourself and then you can just say, oh, I'm going to turn this into a tool. I'm going to put this out just on GitHub so that other people can see it exists and can use it for themselves and write a blog post about it. Then you've released it, then you're good. Um, so at the same time as you're going through these steps and let's recap, you start with a foundation in programming, Python or R and Bash. You do a small project and you repeatedly do small projects. And third, you do tool safaris where you see what's out there. And you also want to do that for your field of biology. See what's out there. What are the problems? What are the cool new sequencing techniques people are using? Whatever it is they're doing that could have an impact on what you want to do. So look what's out there. And fourth, think about building your own tools. So in addition to that process, at the same time, you also want to look for ways to engage with the rest of the community. So look for podcasts, blogs, or people to follow on Twitter. For podcasts, I recommend Mendel's Pod for news and stories, especially around biotechnologies and what's going on in the future. They have some very interesting things on that. And I follow the Effort Report, which is a great discussion on life and career as an academic. It's by two professors. So they have some interesting notes on how they've gone through their career and their careers and what they have done along the way and how they're seeing things change over time. And it's very interesting to you if you want to be an academic. So I would highly recommend that even if you're just a graduate student and you're not necessarily going to do anything except go into industry. So also look for blogs related to your field of interest and follow people on Twitter who are at your, in your field. And one thing is when I go to conferences, I found that I can use this app 
online that's free. It's called Tweet Deck, and it allows you to really easily follow multiple streams on Twitter. So you can follow a hashtag for the conference, and then just follow your normal Twitter stream. And you can also see notifications for yourself if you're really active and people are responding to you. So Tweet Deck is really awesome for keeping track of the conference hashtag. So if you go to, for, for instance, we were just at AGBT uh, back in February of this year, and that's a really awesome conference in Florida, but they have a hashtag AGBT17. And if you just use that, everyone will, who are at the conference will follow that. And so if you follow the hashtag, you'll see what people are saying about the talks and you can kind of have a discussion about what's going on at the conference while you're at the conference. And you can also do that if you're not at the conference, you can spy on them and see what's going on and get a better idea of what people are excited about in your field. So that's another really great way if you can't make it to the conferences yet. Um, there are also some relevant subreddits. Uh, there's one called reddit.com slash r slash bioinformatics. There's also one on genomics. Um, and Quora is starting to have some decent answers on broader questions related to the field of bioinformatics and something about uh, speculation on what the future of biotechnology is and things like that. So if you're looking for more broad topics and asking career questions too, uh, I just saw one on I'm doing a bachelor, should I do a master's in this, this or this different subject? And so there are some really excellent resources out there for learning more about the field. And now for the fun stuff. Um, you should also check out the PhD comics if you haven't already. They're awesome. I read through all of them right when I was applying to graduate schools, right as I had applied. And I was starting to do interviews because I was over winter break in Hawaii. And I just spent days reading through PhD comics instead of going in the pool. I don't recommend that, but it was really fun. And it uh, made me think, hey, graduate school sounds really hard, but I kind of think I can still do it. And I think I'm going to go ahead with this. And here we are. I did make it through, so that's good. But PhD Comics helps to just remind you that life is hard and it's hard for everybody and we can all get through it. Um, the comic XKCD is also really awesome, especially related to uh, programming and math and just general geeky things. It's not fo focused on biology at all, but it does have a great sense of humor. And so that's a really good one for geek culture. And Another one is there's a really great dystopian movie called Gattaca that gives some perspective on the social impact of the work we're doing right now and understanding the human genome and what happens when we start to be able to manipulate or select human embryos based on what we're seeing in the genetic code. And it's kind of scary just how much I think this kind of thing could really happen. So I encourage you to check out Gattaca and just, you know, uh, keep thinking about what is the impact on the world of what we're doing in this field. And I think there's a lot of positive impacts, but as with anything, it can be a double-edged sword. So um, as you're getting started in bioinformatics, I encourage you to, you know, keep talking to people, keep seeing what's out there and um, do really great research. So I'm going to end for today. Keep being awesome. I would like for you to uh, consider subscribing for my weekly emails where I send out videos like this one and that's at omgenomics.com slash subscribe. I also encourage you to subscribe here on YouTube because I think that is part of YouTube's algorithm to help people find this so that they can also get some use out of it if they're looking for bioinformatics help. And um, yeah, that's all for today. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments below here on YouTube. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on the OMG Genomics Show. Bye.